Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. If you have questions about medications, supplements, formulations you may have heard about or read about or or thought about skin health questions, skin health product questions, questions about our true skin health products or success story you'd like to share. Our number today and every day on the bright side, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We want to hear from you. This is your radio program. If you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. And, of course, if you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any longevity products, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Healthy Star Pack, the Fucoid Z, Synaptive. All the fine longevity products are up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And also, please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Retinol 5% gel made with retinol, 5% retinol, as well as vitamin C. Our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are all packed with vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, water, wax, silicon, oil, propylene glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. If you're dealing with accelerated aging or wrinkles or dry skin, if you want to just have an overall skin nutritional supplement, a topical nutritional supplement, you want to know about our Truth Skin Health products, check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking about my, well, one of my all-time favorite topical skin health ingredients. Not a nutritional, not so much a nutritional ingredient, but it's really, really nice as a moisturizer, as a skin softener. It's got natural anti-inflammatory steroids. It's medicinal. It's been used medicinally in, uh, in Africa for centuries, for millennia, really. And, of course, we're talking about shea butter. Love this stuff. It's a little tricky to work with with as a chemist, I will say. It has a tendency to crystallize and, and get crunchy a little bit if you don't know exactly what you're doing when you're formulating with it. But if you do know what you're formulating with it, it is an awesome, awesome skin health ingredient. Skin, uh, well, yeah, skin health ingredient because of its natural steroids. Yesterday, we're talking about its cortisone-like effects. If you've been using a cortisone product, you are running the risk, as we said, of something called cortisone withdrawal syndrome, which is a nasty rebound condition. If you've been using it for uh, eggs, if you've been using cortisone for eczema or irritation or rashes, when you try to get off your cortisone, sometimes you'll get this awful rebound condition where your eczema is worse than it ever was before. 
and I've seen pictures of it, and it is absolutely miserable. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that shea butter has the same power and the same effectiveness as cortisone. Cortisone's a drug, and shea butter is not a drug. Nonetheless, shea butter does have wonderful anti-inflammatory properties, phyto, plant anti-inflammatory properties, mild anti-inflammatory properties. So it's a mild replacement for hydrocortisone creams. And if you're trying to wean yourself off your cortisone creams, using shea butter may be a good way to do it. You won't get the same anti-inflammatory properties of the drug, but you'll get a mild anti-inflammatory property, and it may allow you to alleviate or mitigate or reduce the likelihood of this awful rebound condition that can occur. In addition to the natural steroids, shea butter contains other nutrients, fatty acids. Like all seeds have fatty acids. There's omega-6 fatty acids. Uh, I don't think, you know, there's not very much omega-3 fatty acids in shea butter, but there's, uh, there's omega-6 fatty acids, and this, has a, this can have a benefit for helping improve dry, chafed skin. Remember, there's no omega-3s in the skin. It's all omega-6s, and omega-6s are part of the, uh, the uh, involved in part, in at least partially involved, in how the skin softens and moisturizes itself. And using shea butter topically can help restore some of the omega-6s if you're not getting them, getting them in the diet or if you're not absorbing or utilizing your fats. And shea butter also has natural sun screening agents, which we'll talk about here in a second. So you, it's good to use shea butter topically before the sun and after the sun. You can use it before the sun for its sunscreen properties and after the sun for its, uh, for its uh, sun protect or for its healing properties, for its sunburn preventing properties. Uh, it's, shea butter has zinc in it, which is also really important for the skin. Zinc also has anti-inflammatory properties. Shea butter's got a little bit of sodium in it, got a little bit of iron in it, got a little bit of calcium in it. This is pretty, pretty interesting for a completely non-toxic skin softening substance that's relatively cheap and smell smells really good and completely 100% non-toxic and gentle. It also has vitamin E in it. It has all eight forms of vitamin E, all four tocopherols. Actually, it uh, has four. It doesn't have the to tocotrienols as much, but it's got four of the tocopherols in there. Uh, it's got some vitamin A, some carotenes, magnesium, just amazing, amazing stuff. One of the nicest qualities of shea butter is its ability to melt at skin temperature. You put it on your skin and it melts right in. That's because of its rich, uh, probably maybe 30%, 25 to 30% uh, content of fats. So you just put it on uh, liquid fats, that is. You just put it on your skin and kind of rub it a little bit. Even just touching it with your hand will melt it into the skin. You can get it at the, off the internet at the health food store if you want. You don't need to buy a product with shea butter in it. You can actually buy straight shea butter at, off the internet or in health food stores. Look for the kind that's unrefined because a lot of the nutritional value comes out when you refine it. Now, if it's unrefined, it's going to be darker. You can tell by looking at it that it's unrefined. The refined stuff is completely white. The unrefined stuff has a dark kind of grayish tint to it and it smells absolutely divine I mean you just know you've got a natural beautiful product right from the nut basically if it's refined you don't have that quality it's a little purer and skincare companies like to use it refined and that's another important point if you're using a topical product and says made with shea butter contains shea butter and it's not the unrefined kind of shea butter you're not going to get as much of the nutritional value you'll still get the moisturizing quality but you're not going to get the nutritional value and skincare companies don't like to use the unrefined shea butter for a couple of reasons first of all the unrefined shea butter tends to be a little bit less stable and when it's cooked and when it's heated in the in the cream and then it gets cooled again it tends to crystallize a little bit and that makes it difficult for manufacturers to work with and because most consumers don't know the difference the manufacturers just go with the unrefined kind also uh, the unrefined shea butter uh, uh, can uh, go rancid somewhat quickly can kind of smell a little bit off shea butter does go bad shea butter does go rancid now the unrefined uh, the refined kind the purified kind that one is not going to go rancid as readily again this is a reason why you'll probably not going to find unrefined shea butter in a skin uh, topical skin product I personally when I was formulating shea butter I was only using the unrefined shea butter and you can throw Throw in some vitamin E, and that'll take care of the rancid pro rancidity issue. Uh, but most skincare companies don't care about that, and they'll just use the un the refined kind. It's also whiter and makes for a whiter cream. You can't really make a white cream with a unrefined form of shea butter. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side. We will return right after this. Bright 
Inside, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to sign up and join the Brightside Ben team, we'd love to have you as part of our longevity team. Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right, so we're talking about shea butter, the uh, wonderful multifunctional fruit or butter that comes from the fruit of the shea tree been used in Africa as an insect repellent, uh, sun protection product, as an antiperspirant for preventing stretch marks for thousands of years. It's been used to uh, rub over baby's skin to make this baby's skin soft after they take a bath. It's uh, considered to be sacred and uh, a mystical plant. The shade tree is respected and revered in Africa. It's a part of an ancient ritual called Begu in Africa, which is um, a festival where people drink various uh, various extracts from the shea tree and the, the baobab tree. That's another African tree with a nice butter, with, an, with a nut that contains a nice butter to it. Shea butter has been used to make lamp oil, heating oil, soap. It's a cholesterol-lowering agent. I mean, there's so many amazing, amazing things for shea butter. Of course, topically is really where it shines as a topical ingredient for skin health products. I've been using it for many years. You want to make sure you're using the unrefined kind. I highly recommend you go on the Internet and get a, a pound jar of this stuff. It's like 20 bucks or so. Uh, and just You can just dip your hand in there. You could use it on your lips. You can use it on your body. You'll know you're getting non-toxic, a non-toxic skin softening agent. And plus, you get all the nutritional value, the topical nutritional value associated with shea butter. Use the unrefined kind. It's darker. It's got this delicious nutty scent, and you're going to get all the minerals and all the good fats and the vitamin E that you're not going to get in the unrefined kind. There's various grades of shea butter. They grade it from A to E, A being raw shea butter, B being refined shea butter, and then on down the, down the road, E is uh, the worst kind. That's the kind that's got uh, that may have contaminants in it, mold, yeast, and fungi. It's best to stick to the grade A stuff. Your nutritional value and your healing value is going to diminish as you go lower and lower on the shea butter scale. Then there are the polyphenols. Remember, we started talking about the shea butter because we were talking about the polyphenols, the phenolic acid, specifically something called cinnamic acid. Cinnamic acid is the sunscreening polyphenol. That's got all kinds of sun protection properties. We talked about it last week as a source or raw material for the most important or the most popular, the most well, uh, most uh, the high, the most most used topical ingredient. I think that's how I should say it. The most used topical sunscreen ingredient, octomethoxycinnamate. That's the one that's in 70 to 80 percent or so of your sun protection products. Octomethoxycinnamate is a good sun protection product, sunscreen. Product product, but it's also toxic. And that's the problem with sunscreens. Now, keep in mind, you're only going to get UVB protection. You've got two major sun rays, three major sun rays, really, UVA, UVB, and UVC, ultraviolet A, ultraviolet B, and ultraviolet C. And each one has its own kind of negative aspects to it and its own positive aspects in the case of UV, UVB. UVA is your aging ray. That's the ray that goes down into the lower levels of the, of the skin where the connective tissue is, and that's the stuff that's associated with wrinkles and photo damage. UVB is your burning ray, A for aging, B for burning. That's the one, UVB is the one uh, that's associated with burning, but it's also the one that's associated with vitamin D. So in order to get the vitamin D benefits from the sun, you have to risk a little burning. Now, burning's not good. I'm certainly not in favor of burning, and there's nothing good about burning your skin, that's for sure, and you don't want to be doing it. However, you do need exposure to the burning ray to make vitamin D, and vitamin D from the sun is far superior to vitamin D from supplements and even from food. Keep this in mind, because dermatologists won't tell you this. Dermatologists are not chemists. Doctors in general are not chemists and you don't want to pay any attention to any medical, uh, a medical professional trying to give you chemistry information. Vitamin D from the sun is the best kind of vitamin D. Better than supplements and better than food. However, in order to get the vitamin D from the sun, you got to expose yourself to the burning ray. Now, here's where it gets tricky. 
The sunscreens that we use block UVB. They block the burning ray. Octal methoxycinamate is a UV blocker. It doesn't affect UVA. So you're not going to burn, that's true, but you're also not going to get vitamin D when you use your sunscreen. And you will be getting exposure to the aging ray unless you have a UV block. Now the UV blocks typically will go by the name oxybenzone, a couple other ones, but the benzones in general are the UVA blockers. If you see benzone, sometimes you'll see benzophenone. And then you know you got your UVA block. You say, okay, well, great. Now I've got UVA protection. Problem is, those things are really toxic. UVB blockers are toxic for sure, but UVA blockers are mega toxic. So here's what you got to do. You got to go out in the sun and just don't burn. Even if it's only if you're fair skin and you burn in five minutes, go out in the sun for three minutes. You need to have some sun. And when you do protect yourself, try to use things like shea butter with cinnamic acid in it. There's lots of other things with cinnamic acid. Cinnamon has cinnamic acid. You can make your own UVB protection product with shea butter and cinnamon. Later on, uh, probably tomorrow or the next day, we're going to talk about another incredible herb, herbal material, plant material that you can use to protect yourself from the sun. So cinnamic acid from shea butter is a source of octal methoxycinnamate. It does have some sun protection properties, and shea butter is a great, it may be one of nature's best sources of cinnamic acid. I'm not going to tell you that shea butter will protect you from the sun. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that shea butter has sun protection ingredients in it. So you can use it to bump up your sun protection if you have other, if you're using other, uh, other things, which we'll talk about some of these, some other cinnamic acid containing herbs. And you can certainly add some shea butter to your favorite lotion and cream to bump up its sun protection properties. But uh, you're certainly not going to get the same sun protection properties, sunburn properties from shea butter that you get from octomethoxycinnamate. It's OMC, octomethoxycinnamate, is a drug, and it's regulated as a drug. The reason it's regulated as a drug is because it's toxic. It works, sure. It definitely works. It'll block UVB and it'll keep you from burning. However, it's also going to expose you to toxicity. Even worse, it's going to expose you to toxicity that's activated by the sun. The sun makes octomethoxycinnamate more toxic. And even worse than that is the sun deactivates octomethoxycinnamate. So the longer you're out in the sun, the less protection you're going to get from your sunscreen. They don't tell you that on the commercials. Use, use zinc oxide. That's the way to go. If you're going to burn, use zinc oxide. You can use straight zinc oxide or you can use a product with zinc oxide in it, but straight zinc oxide is, is the best because you don't have to deal with any of the toxicity that's associated with most topical products. So make sure your shea butter's fresh. It's going to go rancid. You can add shea butter to other products or you can use it straight. Refined shea butter, by the way, will last longer than, than the other kind, but it's still, you want to go unrefined. It smells great too. In addition to protecting your skin from the sun and softening the stratum corneum or the skin surface, the cinnamic acid content of shea butter has other skin health benefits. Cinnamic acid, as it turns out, can act like an alpha hydroxy acid. If you look at the chemical structure, it's not quite like an alpha hydroxy acid, but it does ha have some alpha hydroxy acid properties, which means anti-aging. And it also means it can increase the penetration of other topical ingredients that you use after the shea butter. We'll finish that up tomorrow as we continue talking about polyphenols and phytonutrients on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you here in a couple seconds, a couple minutes. I just want to read a few stories. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, shea butter, topical, uh, questions about topical skin care, sun protection. Or if you have a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. From the Journal of Nutrition, zinc supply affects cardiac health. Hmm. In addition to essential metabolic functions, the level of zinc in the body also affects the heart muscle. This is so important to me. Zinc is maybe the single most underappreciated of all the minerals, and it's tragically so because it's really cheap stuff. You're not going to find large amounts in food. Best sources of food are going to be organ meats, or the best food sources of zinc are going to be organ meats, nuts, uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Hopefully you know what those are. 
oysters in general, actually. Seafood is, is a, uh, typically a great source of zinc. Shellfish, lobster, shrimp have some zinc in them. But you're not going to get the big doses that you need, the good doses that you need, the 50 milligrams a day dose that you need from food. But that doesn't matter because the stuff is so cheap. You can get a daily dose of zinc for pennies a day. Go zinc picolinate, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, and everybody needs it. But especially if you're dealing with a skin problem, if you're dealing with eczema, or you're dealing with acne, or you're dealing, or you're trying to uh, accomplish some wound healing after you burn yourself or cut yourself. When you burn yourself, zinc, which is stored in the skin, is actually mobilized. It actually is pulled to the level of the uh, to the area of the cut or the scrape where it stimulates the production of collagen. Zinc is a building amino acid, and there's a very important relationship between zinc and sugar. The more sugar you're eating, the more zinc you need. The more sugar you're eating, the more zinc you're gonna excrete and utilize. And if you're dealing with something like fructose malabsorption syndrome, which many people are, and that is an inability to utilize fructose, if you eat fruit and fruit juice and fructose containing foods and high fructose corn syrup and you feel gassy or bloaty, or if you have something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, the chances are pretty good you're not absorbing your zinc. That means you're going to be deficient in one of the body's most important building substances. Moms who are pregnant really need zinc because the baby uses zinc to, the fetus uses zinc to build a brain. And continuously, even after the baby's born, zinc is very important for child development. Zinc deficiency is in third world countries causes all kinds of developmental problems in children. And zinc is very important for collagen production, for anti-aging. Thus, the article that appeared uh, yesterday in the Journal of Nutrition, zinc deficiency affects the heart muscle. It affects all muscle. And this is very important if you're dealing with heart disease, but also if you're dealing with any kind of muscle issues, multiple sclerosis or muscular dystrophy, or if you're a bodybuilder, if you've got acne, I say that. To me, zinc is like almost like a cure. I don't want to say it's a cure, but it's almost like a cure for acne. Zinc deficiency can cause acne, and many kids are deficient in zinc. Get yourself on 50 milligrams a day of zinc, no matter who you are, no matter what you're dealing with, even if you're healthy. Zinc picolinate. If you're taking zinc, or when you're taking zinc, you always want to balance it out with copper. Zinc Take, uh, as your zinc levels go up, your copper levels go down. So making sure you're getting enough copper with your zinc is also important. Maybe 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day, maybe two to four milligrams of copper a day. I don't know why you don't see zinc and copper together in supplements. I'm going to be coming out with one hopefully soon. I had a zinc copper blend with my other skincare company because I knew how important zinc was. Um, but you always got to balance it out with copper. All right, let's see, uh, 844-236-6010, number. let me read just one more story, then we'll get your phone calls, this one's kind of interesting. This one is from uh, the School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, at Mount Sinai, I think that's Mount Sinai Hospital, published in the journal Nature Medicine, sympathetic nervous system is critical for thermogenesis. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, your sympathetic nervous system is your stress nervous system, thermogenesis is heat, body heat. It turns out that... The sympathetic nervous system, that is your stress nervous system, regulates body heat. How do you like that? When you're under stress, you're going to get hotter. Anybody here ever hear something called a hot flash? I know some of you ladies have heard of hot flashes, some of you guys as well. I've been saying this for years. Hot flashes are a classic sign of a body in distress. Now we have an article published in Nature Medicine where the doctors agree. It turns out that the sympathetic nervous system activates hot flashes, activates body heat. If you're one, and all menopausal symptoms are associated with the sympathetic nervous system, the anxiety, the irritability, the, the insomnia, uh, the uh, infertility, the, uh, the lack of libido, not the infertility, but the lack of libido, the skin problems, all of these are linked to excess sympathetic nervous system activity. You don't need hormone replacement therapy to end your hot flash. That's a boneheaded medical strategy. What you need to do is calm the body down, slow deep breathing, making sure you're staying away from digestive toxins, making sure you're on a nutritional supplement program, using progesterone cream or DHEA or pregnenolone, not estrogen. If you're trying to, if you are going on HRT because you want to avoid your hot flashes or the signs of menopause, it's not estrogen that you need. It's progesterone that you need. Estrogen, as we've been talking about, amps up the stress response, and that's the last thing a menopausal woman needs. It's the progesterone that has the calming effect on the body. And pregnenolone 
standalone works as well. Uh, not quite as strong, perhaps, as progesterone, but that'll also work if you're dealing with hot flashes. And most importantly, perhaps most importantly, lay off the sugar. Reduce your intake of any fast-burning sugars. Use more fiber. Treat yourself like a diabetic. Use niacin and chromium and vanadium and selenium and zinc, 50 milligrams a day of zinc. Treat yourself like a diabetic. Breathe deeply and slowly. Relax the body. Use relaxing nutrients like pregnenolone and progesterone. Also, vitamin E has a relaxing effect on the body. It's not, estro it's not an estrogen issue. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Carol in Washington. Good morning, Carol. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, good morning. Uh, you're right on the subject of what my granddaughter, she's 23, has broken out all up and down her arms in a red rash. It's kind of bumpy and red. Okay. Anytime you got a rash, you want to focus first on the immune system, which means the digestive system. A rash is a sign of an activated immune system. The skin is an immune organ. It's a defensive organ, which makes perfect sense when you think about the location of the skin on the outside of the body. The skin is like a, is our protection from the environment. So the skin is loaded, I mean packed with immune cells. Even skin cells themselves, keratinocytes they call them, your skin cells, they are immune cells. They secrete immune chemicals. And you have various uh, scouts, they call them sentinel cells inside the skin that are constantly reading the blood and constantly reading the environment for enemies that are getting into the body, either through the blood or enemies that are would approach the body from the outside. Now, for the most part, when you have an immune reaction in the skin, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're dealing with something in the blood. Now, your 22-year-old granddaughter is more than likely not shooting up crack in the back alley. So no. if something's getting into her blood, it's probably coming in through food. And the way you assess this is by stopping doing a fast. You, she should notice within a day or two of fasting, her skin rash starts to subside. It may take longer to completely subside, but it will start to subside. When she starts eating again, have her eat her favorite foods, and what she's going to notice is the rash gets worse. And she's going to have to isolate the foods that are causing the problem and then eliminate those. That's all you really need to do, but there's a couple other things I'm going to tell you that may help you. And I'll give you a couple topical strategies as well. So don't, uh, don't go away, Carol. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will return with more good health information right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're in Washington talking to Carol about a rash. Uh, Carol, you there, ma'am? Yeah. Okay, the bottom line of this whole thing is a rash that just appears on the skin should always be regarded first and foremost as a digestive health issue. Now, you'll know this because most people who get these rashes have digestive health problems. So your, your daughter has got to know, or your granddaughter, I'm sorry, has got to know that she's got some kind of digestive health issue, or her mom maybe knows, you know, kids sometimes don't realize it, but a lot of times they do. Gas, bloating, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, etc. You can do an elimination diet, which is where you notice which foods cause the problem to get worse, and then you eliminate those foods. It's best to always start off with a fast, and she will notice a reduction in her symptoms when she does fast. Now, you can do a swero V cleanse if you don't want to do a full blown fast. Sometimes kids don't, or sometimes adults too, don't want to do full blown fasts, and that's why we came up. Uh, with our Swero V product, Jordan Rubin developed the Swero V, S U E R O V I E. Call 866 735 2470. Tell them you want a six pack or the 12 pack of Swero V. You do half, and this is for anybody listening who wants to do a fast or uh, who wants to just go, go low calorie. The Swero V is great as a snack in the middle of the day. It's great for people doing the ketogenic diet, but also for your granddaughter. Uh, uh, half a bottle of Swero V every hour for maybe a day or two. And then when she starts eating again, have her eat her favorite foods, and she'll notice that her favorite foods typically will make the problem worse. Then she has to eliminate those foods. Second thing you're going to want to do is protect the digestive system and help it heal. The nightly essence uh, is also is important for that, the ultimate nightly essence for longevity. Those are probiotics. Have her using apple cider vinegar with meals. Uh, the ultimate enzymes, perhaps, with meals. Those will help. And the Fucoid Z has a nice coating and soothing effect on the digestive tract. Topically, and I, it, just for relief, 
relief. It's not going to really take care of the problem, but it'll give her some relief. Use zinc oxide. And also, if she really wants to go all out, have her get something called Benadryl cream, which is antihistamine cream. If she's totally, totally, totally miserable, use a hydrocortisone cream, but I really don't recommend that. Um, Benadryl, if you're going to go drugs, go Benadryl cream. It's a little bit gentler on the skin than the hydrocortisone, has a little bit less toxicity than the hydrocortisone does. But if she's really miserable, hydrocortisone can be effective. Okay, anything else, my dear? Yeah, you said uh, zinc oxide instead of, instead of bicolonate. Uh, zinc oxide topically, it's a oh, cream. Top- Correct. And then zinc picolinate, I didn't mention that, but zinc picolinate can help also internally. Also, vitamin C might be helpful internally as well as topically. Maybe 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C internally. And then lipophilic fat soluble vitamin C topically. Uh, the only place I know where you can get a good dose of fat soluble vitamin C, though, is my truthtreatments.com. Uh, truth, uh, I would go with the Truth Omega 6 healing cream. Okay. And when uh, you mentioned those uh, articles, and uh, to hear you again, you have so many websites, I don't know where I know. to go to find... I, okay, go to, ben Fuchs, go to either benfuchsarchives.com or you can go to brightsideben.com and both websites have archive pages with search engines. Thank you, by the way, to Peter in the UK for setting up benfuchsarchives.com and all the websites are compiled at benfuchsarchives.com. How, how quickly will this uh, conversation be on the archives? Yes, absolutely. It'll be on right after the show. If you go to brightsideben.com, it's posted right after the show. Okay. Do you have time for another question or no? Real quick. What do you got? Uh, my brother-in-law, he's 83. His hands are starting to numb like he was driving the car the other yeah. day, and he keeps taking them off. That's not a good sign. Hand. That's a sign the body's breaking down. A couple things about that. That's called neuropathy, which is either numbness or pain in the extremities, hands or feet, fingers and toes. Uh, and when you have it, it could be really awful. It could be burning. and I mean, it could be really miserable. A couple things. First of all, you want to treat him like a diabetic. That's the most common reason is changes in blood sugar or an inability for the body to handle sugar, causing a destruction of the of the uh, of the blood vessels that feed the nerves, and consequently you end up with this nerve pain. That's the first thing. All the diabetic stuff, reducing his sugar, and this this will add years to his life too. By the way, reducing his sugar intake, using the sweeties from Longevity, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine from Longevity, Ultimate Selenium. Uh, more fiber. Um, there's one more. I was gonna t- the ultimate niacin. Uh, more fiber, soluble fiber, particularly after he does his meals. Grind up fiber in a in a, a coffee grinder and then put it in water and drink it down after he does his meals. Especially if they have a lot of sugar or a lot of bread in his meals. Diluting his blood sugar with water is another strategy. And then stretching. Doing connective tissue stretching of his hands, of his feet, of his of his legs. Any kind of stretching will help relieve neuropathy. Any kind of exercise. The only problem is when you don't feel like doing exercise or stretching when it causes pain, but that can really be beneficial. One of the reasons why we have neuropathies is the connective tissue shrivels up, and it creates a pulling sensation on the vasculature and on the nerves, both of which can compromise electrical energy that it flows through the through the extremities, and that can cause neuropathies also. So moving the body, stretching the body. Body, exercising the muscles, those can also be helpful in addition to the supplements. And then last but not least, the B vitamins, all the B vitamins. You'll get those in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Carol, I'm going to motivate here. got a bunch of calls I want to get to. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. God bless you. Uh, Don in Atlanta, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? All right. So I'll make, try to make this as quick as possible. Um, sometimes uh, the lower extremities swell up and, uh, you know, standing too long, sitting too long. You know, swelling, um, but yeah, you get a little swelling in the, in the thighs. Well, Any pain or neuropathies? Cat. Any kind no of pain, just, no neuropathy, just swelling. But what's weird is, is sometimes when I eat, the swelling will disappear. Okay, well that's so that's I kind of. I was wondering if this is digestive or yeah, uh, this yes, is absolutely. Both, digestive okay. and circulatory. Those are the two things that you want to focus on. First of all, look for other digestive symptoms. If you're constipated, okay. that's going to make things worse. The pushing action will make things worse on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the venous supply. It can cause hemorrhoids, varicose veins. Do you have varicose veins, by the way? By the way? No, I, actually, it's the opposite. I, I'm very easily defecating, like super. Okay, you got like diarrhea, constipation kind of thing? 
Not diarrhea, but really loose sometimes. Okay, well, that's a but sign that of malabsorption. Of I do take magnesium, so. Well, that might, it might be related to the magnesium, but that could be malabsorption of the magnesium, or it could be uh, malabsorption of other nutrients. Typically, loose stools will follow uh, minerals or nutritional supplementation if you're not absorbing. So work on the absorption issue. That's the first thing I would think about, is use digestive enzymes with your meals, as well as apple cider vinegar with your meals. Uh, the Ultimate Nightly Essence can help you, and also a uh, few Eucoid Z may, be help, may be able to help you as well. Grind up chia seeds uh, and, and also flax seeds, but especially chia seeds, soluble fiber. You can go get some inulin. We talked about inulin yesterday. That can help mop up or suck up excess moisture and slow up the release of nutrients and may be able to help you improve absorption. I would be looking also at circulatory issues. When the, blood, when the fluid leaks out of the blood and it kind of pools towards the bottom of the body, that tells me that the, the blood and the, the circulatory fluids aren't making in the full circle. Uh, when your heart pumps, the blood goes down the body, and then it's got to go up against gravity on the return trip. If the pumping action is not hard enough or there's something sludgy in the blood coming from digestive toxicity, it's going to be much more difficult for the blood to make the return trip back up to the heart. Consequently, things are going to pool down to the bottom. So moving your body around, getting on a rebounder, practicing slow, deep breathing, those can all, all be helpful for you. And then correcting any digestive problems, that can be helpful for you. If you do have any kind of food allergies or food toxicity, that's going to increase sludginess to the blood. So you got to make sure that you're eliminating problem foods in addition to using all the nutrients that we just talked about for helping support digestive health. Don't forget slow, deep breathing. That's very important for helping move fluid around through the body. And then uh, last but most certainly not least, think about the connective tissue. When you have a defect in the connective tissue, this can also cause problems with blood making the return trip upwards and all the connective tissue building strategies we talk about on the program, bone broth, uh, bone broth protein, bone broth, uh, vitamin C, zinc. Get on the Healthy Start Pack for sure, for sure. And then also don't forget your, uh, your uh, uh, ultimate nightly essence. I'd be doing nine of those a day. They're part of the Healthy Start Pack. All right, Don, I'm going to let you go, buddy. I want to get to a couple more calls real quick. Thanks so much for your call. I hope we helped you out. Uh, Elaine, looks like you might get the last word here. What's going on? Well, I called you yesterday, um, and I mentioned something about getting blood tested, like at one of those health fairs. And the reason I was um, asking that is because I think I may have some thyroid issue, but I'd like to... You're not going to find out by a health fair. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to find out by the health fair. The best way to do uh, to do a thyroid test is to do what's called a basal thermometer test. Have you ever heard of the basal test for yeah, the thyroid? Yeah, I've done that before, and I I'm low. But what does that mean? That means that you got to start working on your thyroid health. The thyroid is secondary to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, when they're burning out, when they're stressed, when they're burning the candle on both ends, will eventually cause suppression of the thyroid. Another thing that can go wrong with the thyroid is autoimmunity. And that means a digestive health issue. And if you have blood sugar problems, you're also going to have an issue with the thyroid. That's the triangle of disease right there. The blood, the digestive system, the blood sugar, and the adrenal glands. If you did the basal, and I'll, I'll talk about the basal test tomorrow. That's a, a vaginal test that you do for test your body temperature. That's the best way to assess thyroid problems. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, go back to your triangle. I'm out of time, Elaine. Sorry. Uh, call back tomorrow, and I'll get you first up. That's all the time we have for today on Farm. Mrs. Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.